Hello, and welcome to the Hamamatsu YouTube channel. As you may know, Hamamatsu Photonics manufactures a complete range of photo sensors, from simple photodiodes to photomultiplier tubes. But today, we're going to look at one particular detector, which is generating a lot of interest in recent years. And this detector is the MPPC. If you're currently using a photodiode, or maybe even an APD, and you're looking to improve the sensitivity of your system, or perhaps you're using a PMT, and you want something that's more robust and compact, then stay tuned because the MPPC may be the suitable detector for you. Silicon photomultipliers, like the MPPC, have very high gain, which raises the signal above the readout noise. What sets the MPPC apart from other silicon photomultipliers is our low noise, low crosstalk design that makes it easier to distinguish low levels of signal. What this means for you as a system designer is to alleviate some of the challenges with designing a readout circuit. Perhaps you can increase your bandwidth, use less gain on your front end amplifier, or maybe even use lower cost electronics. Yet with all this performance, the MPPC is an easy device to use and implement into a system. Today, I'll show you how easy it is to get up and running with using the MPPC using our evaluation kit. Today, we'll be using the C12332-01 evaluation kit along with the S13360 High Precision MPPC. This MPPC series uses our optical trench technology, which results in class-leading low crosstalk probability as low as 1%. Several Microsoft sizes are available to match to the sensitivity and dynamic range requirements of your application. Our Microsoft sizes range from 25 microns to 75 microns. The C12332-01 evaluation kit can get you up and running within minutes to detect single photons. It includes a high voltage power supply, reconfigurable trans impedance amplifier, and a sensor board with positions for different sensor sizes to easily disconnect and connect sensors of different sizes for quick evaluation. A sample software with user interface is also provided, allowing you to change the bias voltage as well as temperature coefficient. You can also monitor the applied voltage and the temperature reading from the power supply. The MPPC we're using today is just one from our MPPC family. You can see our full lineup at hamamatsu.com, or you can go directly to our product selection page at hama-sipum.com. On our website, you'll find many MPPCs suitable for any application. Whether you're range finding with 905 nanometer lasers, detecting trace amounts of ATP contamination, or measuring fluorophores of various intensities. For ease of evaluation, we also offer evaluation kits specific to each series. We also make standard modules as well, including the high voltage power supply, readout circuit, and in some cases, cooling functions. We can also design custom modules specific for your requirements. To give you an idea of how easy it is to use an evaluation kit, we prepared this example setup. Shown here, is the evaluation kit, power connector, and USB cable, which is included. We've also prepared an MPPC, which is separate, our oscilloscope, and a low voltage power supply. First, we'll connect the main board to the sensor board using the included flex cable. This cable connects the high voltage power supply to the sensor board and carries the sensor signal back from the sensor board to the amplifier and the temperature reading from the sensor board back to the high voltage power supply. The ends of the flex cable are identical, so either end can be connected to the sensor board or the main board and vice versa. But the terminals are only on one side, so do make sure that your terminals are facing in the correct direction before locking it into the connector. Once you've confirmed that the flex cable is oriented correctly into the connector, you can lock it into place using the locking tabs on either side of the connector. Now we can connect our MPPC into the sensor board. The high precision series has three different sizes, 1.3 by 1.3 millimeter, 3 by 3 millimeter, and 6 by 6 millimeter. For ease of use, we have outlines for each size on the sensor board. To connect the MPPC, simply find the outline corresponding to the size of MPPC that you're using. Then, make sure your sockets are aligned with the board before pressing gently to insert the MPPC into the socket. 
Next, connect your power connector onto the main board. And you'll connect your leads to your plus and minus 5 volt power supply. The red wire goes to the plus side. The blue wire to the minus side. And the black wire to your ground. Next, we're going to connect the output of the evaluation board to our oscilloscope. This evaluation board has an SMB connector at the output, so you may need an SMB to BNC adapter to connect to your oscilloscope. Then connect your USB cable from your main board to your PC. Check that all connections are secure before turning on your 5 volt power supply. It's also a good idea to cover the active area of your MPPC if you're working in a well lit room. Otherwise, the high voltage power supply will trigger its overcurrent protection circuit. Now we're going to set up our evaluation kit in our software. With the evaluation kit powered up, we can now check that our PC is recognizing the connection to the board as well as install the drivers. So from the start menu, search for an open device manager. Now you may find the evaluation kit listed as an unknown device in the other devices category. So right click on Hamamatsu USB serial converter and select update driver. Then select browse my computer and here you'll specify the folder which contains the drivers from the supplied CD-ROM. You can also download the most up-to-date drivers and software from our website. So select the driver folder, click OK. Make sure the include subfolders box is checked, then click next to continue. Click the close button after the driver software completes the installation. In device manager, the evaluation kit will be moved to the ports category. Take note of the COM port number for the Hamamatsu USB serial converter because we'll need this shortly. In this example, it's COM4. With the driver, successfully installed, we can now use the sample software included with the evaluation kit. Find the application folder in the files included with the CD-ROM. Inside this folder, you will find the C11204-01 application. Double click to open the sample software. In the serial port section, choose the comp port number assigned to the evaluation kit. In this example, our COM port number was 4. Click the open button next to the drop down. This will open the serial communication with a high voltage power supply and the PC. If communication is successful, you will find the input boxes populated with the existing settings of the high voltage power supply EEPROM. The monitor section will also populate with the high voltage reading, the current draw, and the ambient temperature of the high voltage power supply. If you supply a temperature coefficient, the applied voltage will be modified from the reference voltage as a temperature sensor detects changes in the ambient temperature. You can also turn the high voltage power supply on and off from this menu. And another feature of this evaluation kit is an overcurrent protection feature. The way this works is if the high voltage power supply detects a high current draw for several seconds above its max rating of 2 milliamps, it will automatically shut off to prevent damage to the high voltage power supply as well as other electronics. I will intentionally trip this overcurrent feature by opening the dark box and exposing the MPPC to ambient light. 
You can confirm that the overcurrent has tripped by checking the output, output voltage in the monitors section. If it's close to zero, that means that the overcurrent function was tripped. So you can restore the high voltage by cycling the plus and minus 5 volt power supply off, then back on again. We'll have to reestablish communication. And we can confirm that the high voltage is restored. So let's run a simple experiment to see how the MPPC works. To start, we're going to want to set up our high voltage power supply specifically for MPPC. Each MPPC series has a different breakdown voltage. Within the series, the breakdown voltage can also vary depending on the size of the microcell. And also, detectors will have variations from lot to lot. So be sure to check the documentation that came with your MPPC for your specific operating voltage. You can find the factory's recommended operating voltage on the blue bag holding the MPPC. This recommended operating voltage is based on the measured breakdown voltage plus the recommended over voltage for this MPP series and microcell size. So let's open up the sample software again and enter this operating voltage value into the EEPROM settings. For our particular example, the recommended voltage corresponding to an over voltage of 3 volts is 55.26 volts. So we'll enter this value into the reference voltage input of the EEPROM settings. Click on Write to update this value into the high voltage power supply. And you should immediately see the monitor output voltage reflecting this new value. Once you've finished configuring the high voltage power supply, I suggest disconnecting the USB before taking measurements in order to minimize noise. We can now disconnect the USB cable and start taking measurements. For our experiment, we're using an adjustable LED light source. A fiber cable connects the LED to the dark box. Inside the dark box, we have our MPPC with evaluation kit, as well as an APD module and a photodiode so we can compare the three detectors. We'll measure the response from all three detectors then we'll gradually decrease the intensity of our light source and see how all the detectors respond as the intensity decreases. So let's look at how these detectors respond on our oscilloscope as we gradually decrease the intensity of the light source. The blue trace on the left shows the MPPC evaluation kit. The red trace in the middle shows the APD module. And the green trace on the right shows the photodiode which is connected to an external preamp. Initially, all the detectors have no problem measuring the signal, but watch closely as we lower the intensity starting from 0 dB attenuation. So, slowly lowering the intensity. Very quickly, the signal from the photodiode disappears at only minus 12 dB. This is expected because without any gain, any signal that we generate from the photodiode will be drowned out by the readout noise of our measurement circuit. The APD is still visible, although it is approaching the noise floor. So we'll reduce the intensity further. And next, the APD signal disappears at around minus 30 dB. This shows the clear advantage of the MPPC with its much higher gain, it can elevate these weak signals above the noise floor. So let's keep going and see how much lower the MPPC can go. We've gone all the way down to about minus 60 dB, and we can still make out the signal from the MPPC and we can clearly see the advantage of using MPPC for very low light level measurements. We can also adjust the over voltage to see what kind of effect it has. The evaluation kit makes this a really easy process, so let's open up the software and give it a try. But first, we'll switch our oscilloscope to persistence mode, so we can see how it changes the signal. 
and going back to our sample software, recall that our reference voltage, 55.26 volts, corresponds to 3 volts over voltage for the MPPC. If we want to increase our over voltage by 1 volt, we can simply increase the reference voltage by the same amount. So we can change this to 56.26 volts. And writing that change to the EEPROM will immediately apply the new voltage to the MPPC. But let's apply a more drastic change so we can observe the impact clearly. Let's increase it by 5 volts instead. So we'll change this to 60.26 volts. And then going back to our waveforms, we can see that the gain has increased dramatically, but the noise has increased as well. So finding the right over voltage is a balance between increasing photon detection efficiency and increasing gain versus increasing the dark counts, increasing the crosstalks, and increasing the afterpulse. Another factor to consider is temperature. Temperature affects the breakdown voltage as well as dark counts of the MPPC. So stay tuned for our next video where we'll experiment with temperature and see how our MPPC and our MPPC modules compensate for temperature and control temperature with our cooling functions. If you'd like to buy this MPPC evaluation kit or other detectors, then head over to our online store shop.haomatsu.com where we have detectors and supporting electronics in stock ready to ship. Once again, thank you for joining and I hope to see you again soon.